Hi, Dr. Jim here. Finishing up on my fetal monitoring series, it's been great to have you with us. This is the fifth segment, and this is about interventions. Uh, we've been talking about uh, fetal heart rate. We've been talking about fetal uh, uh, distress and stress and uh, the kind of contractions that you can have that maybe give us some concern, those decelerations. And uh, we uh, talked about uh, some of the things that we can do or that we might do to intervene, but today I'm going to drill down a little more specifically on some of that stuff. Believe me, if there are variations in the fetal heart rate, if they seem to be out of the normal, there are probably a reason for it. We're not, able, not always able to determine what it is, but as a guy that's been doing this for over 30 years, I like to try to figure out what that is and deliver for you a healthy happy baby. So let's talk a little bit more about interventions and what we need to do. Well, whenever we see a, a, a variable deceleration, when we see uh, late decelerations or a rapid heart rate beyond that, uh, beyond that 6 to 25 zone or less than uh, 6 per minute, if we see a prolonged late deceleration, it's our obligation to reassess the situation and try to figure out what the heck is going on. Let's go back to that uh, that we talked about before. Uterine contractions have to be sufficient to push the baby through the birth canal. The baby and the mother's pelvis need to be right-sized for one another. And the baby's position needs to be such that it can push down through the birth canal. Any of those things that are out of, uh, out of sync with one another can cause uh, fetal stress and sometimes fetal distress and a need for uh, a, a need for modification, but it goes it goes beyond that as well. And so let's just pretend for a moment that we're dealing with a mom that uh, is having some late decelerations. Um, in that instance, it really requires a total global uh, reassessment of uh, of uh, uh, what it is that may be going on. But if they're just those early decelerations, and we know that those are associated with head compression, we know that the baby's being pushed down the birth canal, and as long as they're not, they don't convert from an early deceleration that occurs gradually with the onset of the contraction, as long as they don't become lates, uh, we don't need to really necessarily do anything more than Perhaps if the uterus is, is uh, uh, the intensity of uterine contraction is really great, the baby's on Pitocin, we may want to drop uh, or reduce or even turn off the Pitocin altogether and uh, uh, relieve, that, uh, relieve that stress. With the late deceleration, if it's coupled with, as we've spoken before, as I've spoken before, meconium, which suggests distress, if it's coupled with bleeding, uh, if it's uh, uh, coupled with fever, we need to intervene in ways that may make a difference there. And that is uh, repositioning the mom, uh, providing uh, intravenous fluids, because labor and delivery is a long time, so oftentimes just giving uh, a bolus of intravenous fluids and then a, uh, an aggressive uh, uh, intravenous strip and reestablishing hydration will do wonders for uh, the um, abnormalities that we're identifying. If, if we're uncertain about, uh, uh, if we're uncertain about the quality of our tracing, there's two things we can do. One is to insert what we call a fetal scalp electrode. That gives us a better uh, tracing of the baby's heart. Fetal scalp electrode, actually a little wire that we uh, screw into the baby's scalp, connect it to the electrode, and we get a much more precise reading on the, on the baby's heart so that we're not making any false uh, decisions about, uh, about what, we're, what we're dealing with. It also might be that we need to uh, determine whether or not, accurately determine whether or not the uterus is contracting adequately. And that means that we place an internal uh, uterine pressure catheter, actually slip a pressure catheter inside the uterine cavity and measure the strength of those contractions to make certain that we're getting good effective contractions or if those contractions are too strong. Again, it's taking the external monitors and converting them to internal monitors for more precise evaluation. If the, uh, if the uh, decelerations and abnormalities don't change with repositioning, one of the things we can do is also add some oxygen. Uh, that can help uh, greatly to improve the baby's oxygenation, improve their heart rate, make those uh, concerning decelerations go away. 
uh, or hopefully so, by modifying position and, and so on and so forth. Then remember with the variable deceleration, that's about cord compression. So there we're changing position and try to get any pressure the baby may be exerting on his lifeline uh, away from that. One of the other things that we often do is what's called amnio infusion. Uh, that's in infusing fluid, uh, normal saline, uh, salt solution, into the uterus to expand the uterus and give the infant more room. If there's low fetal, uh, if there's low amniotic fluid, that can put pressure on the baby. So we'll do an amnio infusion to correct decelerations and other abnormalities. And remember with all of this, it's early intervention. We don't wait until we've got prolonged, late, oh my gosh, decelerations. We try to intervene early and get that going. And, and, uh, and, and often that works really, really nicely. I, it's the, I can't tell you more, I can't em emphasize more that uh, delivering babies is a team sport. We've got to work with our nurses. We get, often I get a, a, an obstetrical consult and um, run the whole uh, uh, scenario by them and ask their opinion about what we might want to do. And that may include a curbside consult or a, an immediate and direct consult with, the, uh, with one of my colleagues going in, evaluating uh, the patient and, and giving, uh, giving uh, good advice. And then I think uh, communicating with the family is critical and again doing that early on to relieve the family of the stress or to educate them about what it is uh, that we're doing to make certain that we have a healthy happy baby and that may mean an expedited uh, let's get going emergency cesarean section. There's no, uh, there's no rationale for waiting and not acting urgently when we've decided that a cesarean section is the best, in the best interest of the baby, of mom, and of dad. This is Dr. Jim for Be Healthy, Be Happy. My goal is a healthy, happy you. Be sure to subscribe to Be Healthy, Be Happy University and stay tuned for other video segments on YouTube. This is Dr. Jim.